I'm just um, anxious about time because mm -hmm. I think that I have way more than an hour of content. Okay. All right. We, we can definitely get started. All right. When do you want to take questions? You want to, so, I, so if I can just take over then um, what, um, so hi everybody. Again, for anybody who didn't hear, my name is Saki and I am a relatively new patient advocate, although I've been in healthcare peripherally for more than 30 years. Um, and um, the easiest way I think for doing questions through the presentation is please just interrupt me. Um, I have a, what I feel or I'm afraid is an overwhelming amount of information. You don't need to take notes, although it doesn't please take notes. And, um, but I'll uh, tell you in a few minutes how to get the slides. Um, so you will have the opportunity to get everything that you're seeing, um, which is, is helpful. Um, and for what it's worth, my background in video is simply that I have, um, I'm, I'm more on the healthcare administration side and nonprofit administration. So I've worked in large organizations that I've had to do marketing for. And so I've been very comfortable doing video for a long time. Um, and it, like um, uh, Karen was just saying with technology, the truth is it just keeps getting easier and easier as technology gets better and better. Um, so the reality is today, everybody can create a high quality video, frankly, um, with nothing more than your cell phone. So um, I'm just gonna go through it. Please interrupt as I do, but um, you know, ask questions and, and I'm happy. If, and if it's a question that I think is gonna go into too much detail or I'll cover later, I'll also let you know. Um, so the things that I'm gonna uh, cover today are the tools that, that you would need to use and things to consider. Um, so that means lighting and sound and content, how to, you know, where are you creating content from and scripts and, you know, what kinds of materials do you need and editing software, frankly. Um, other things to think about are formats. So for example, what, what kind of camera are you using? And so what kind of, um, is it creating an MP4? Is it creating a .mov? Does it actually make any difference at all? Um, uh, scripts, again, are super important, so I'll talk a lot about that. Um, another thing to consider is subtitles, and I'll talk more later about why that's so important. Um, and then, frankly, you know, your ROI, and is, is it worth doing this, you know? Um, so with that said, um, making videos can be complicated. Making videos can be expensive, you know, if, if you allow it to be. Um, it can take a considerable amount of time. A lot of people feel like they're not really good with technology or hate dealing with technology. I hear that a lot. So the question is, why would you really want to do this? Um, and there's a lot of good reasons. So today, now these, these numbers are varied from a lot of different sources, but bottom line, you know, we've got 232 million people in the US. Um, statistics show that pretty much 84% of people or just shy of 195 million people watch videos online. That means you've got a fair amount of a large audience to be able to capture. Um, five billion videos are watched on YouTube every day, which is, you know, it's mind blowing. And that's globally, obviously. Um, in the US, you know, the average person spends more than an hour watching video and that's on their phones or on the computers or you know in the car on their tablets um cisco one of the you know primary online networking organizations um, has determined that video actually makes up 80 percent of all internet traffic so um and 100 million hours of videos are being watched on facebook every day that's facebook alone um so right there you know the our clients are online. Um, so the other day I was listening to somebody who was also presenting about Facebook actually, but he talked about the importance and the value of understanding the data and the numbers 
and how we can use that to determine how and what we do. So, you know, this is a chart that kind of is a, a no brainer, but, you know, the larger the screen, the longer period of time people tend to watch. Okay. So obviously on a TV, people are going to watch the longest on smartphones. They're going to watch the least. However, since most of our audience is going to most likely catch us on their cell phones, use that information to determine how long a video is. So here they're basing, you know, the, the amount of time in terms of, um, you know, how, what percentage of people watching it. So it's clear, even though overwhelmingly more people watch greater than 10 minute videos, you know, people watch movies on their phones. Um, what's that, you know, sweet spot. And, and for me, that sweet spot has always been one to three minutes. Um, I listened to somebody yesterday who described uh, what he thought of as the red light rule, right? A red light is about 120 seconds. So you want someone to be able to watch your video during with the time that they're stuck and they're sitting there. And so that's, you know, that attention span. So just, you know, something to consider. Um, I'm going to bring up a number of names of people that I think are worth following and looking into. Um, and again, there's a list at the end, but, but these are people who do it really well. And I think that I, I, you know, as a parent, I've always felt this and I feel I'm a firm believer in that it's important to make any decision you do with as much information as possible so that you're making a conscious choice of what to do or not to do and not be blindsided. So this woman, Shay Robottom, young woman who has, you know, kind of blown the roof off of making a lot of money, frankly, with just video. Um, and she does a lot of, she spends a lot of time providing easy, free, valuable information. And so she's worth kind of looking into, but her number one recommendation for getting high quality video is paying somebody to do it. So uh, she talks about this a lot. So and now why am I being discouraging? Because it's not so simple or straightforward and it can be time consuming, but there is so much that you can do on your own, okay? So with that said, this is kind of diving into the meat of it. This guy, Jonathan Palmar, is another person who does a lot of video online. Interestingly, another young guy. Actually, I found his, his stuff initially very sarcastic and almost caustic in his videos. And then he, Shay Robottom hired him. And all of a sudden, he's doing videos that are informational. And... Every time I'm watching something, I'm always waiting for like him to make some joke about it, and he doesn't. So um, he coined this acronym SCALE, which actually is a great formula to remember. These are the basic things that you should always remember anytime you're taking any sort of video. Um, you got a script, you have a camera, you have audio, you have lighting and you have editing. All of those are things, even if you don't do them, should be in the back of your mind because they all have um, relevance into, um, into how you're gonna do what you're gonna do. So um, a couple of things. The, to get a copy of the slides, I'm gonna ask everybody to do two things. Um, one is please go to YouTube and you can, my, my name is unique, and so it's easy to find me. Um, just look me up, subscribe to my YouTube channel. And if you sign up for my newsletter, and then let me know that you've done this, I'm happy to send you a PDF of all these slides. Um, now, the, the other thing that I just did is use the, a marketing tip that everybody should use. I'm offering free content but I need to have something from it as well. It's really important that we all understand that it's a, our time is valuable and, and we should get something for it. So I am all about sharing and anybody who has worked with me or knows me knows that, that I freely offer and I feel like, um, you know, the rising tide analogy is something I live by. You know, if I can share and help you all be better, it's only going to be better for me. Um, at the same time, you know, I, I have my needs too. So shoot me an email, text me. You have my 
contact information. Let me know you've done these two things and I'll send you a copy of the PDFs. So um, diving right in. Um, so let's talk about scripts. So should you use the script? You know, uh, I think that in my experience, the videos that I have found most compelling don't seem to be scripted. Um, you know, they feel more natural when somebody is really just talking and sharing. Um, and, but that, that's not so easy to do. Um, so, and especially if you're trying to make the, take the most advantage of, you know, 90 seconds, um, the more organized that you can be, the better. So, you know, every script should have a beginning, middle, and end. Um, and if you break it down into the hook, which is, you know, some sort of bold statement that you start your video out with that actually captures people's attentions and, and minds. Like, oh, oh, what, they, what are they talking about? So my most recent video series, um, my first line was, cancer sucks. Who's going to argue with that? Um, and, and the truth is that I think that's an accurate statement, but, but it's, you know, it's brash. Um, but you want something to catch them quickly so that they'll keep watching. Um, another thing to remember about the hook, and, and this is everybody's elements of comfort, you know, come into play here. Um, but, you know, your hook doesn't always have to be really what the video is all about. You are trying to find a way to get people to continue watching. Now, you don't want to um, trick people. I mean, you don't want to be dishonest or disingenuous. Um, but, you know, it's, it's worth, I think, making, you know, a mind-blowing piece of information is, it can be valuable. You know, five billion videos are watched every day on YouTube. That's a mind-blowing piece of information. Um, but it's still interesting and relevant. Um, then you have a story. You know, the, whatever, that's the meat of whatever the video is. You should either tell a specific story that relates to you or your graded point and expand upon it in some sort of interesting way. Um, interestingly, not all content has to be personal stuff. Um, you know, Karen and I have talked about this, that um, I am using the content that I believe my potential clients will find valuable. And so, you know, this series is on cancer, but I'm doing a lot of campaign zero videos because the information is incredibly valuable. And I am a firm believer that everybody should, you know, have access to this. Um, so it's really just a matter of, you know, sharing the information that you feel is important for you, you know, that your clients are going to want to hear. And then the last thing, and this is as important as everything else, is ending with a takeaway or a CTA. Anybody know what CTA stands for? What's it stand for, Nancy? Call to action, and you've already given us one. <laughs> Call to action. Um, you want to make sure that you're asking literally asking in your video for people to, to take some action. Now, the action can be as simple, and I'm not gonna, I am no expert on this, all right? Um, the action can be as simple as go to the Campaign Zero website and you can download this list for yourself. Or check out this Mayo Clinic list of 11 ways of dealing, of coping with a cancer diagnosis. Um, but the call to action could also be sign up for my YouTube channel or call me for a free consult or, you know, anything, but it's really important. And the call to action shouldn't take any time and it shouldn't be by any means something that people have to think about because really the point is to just slide it in there, but there needs to be something that you're giving people to do without feeling salesy. So um, in terms of script writing, how to get help with scripts, there's so much content online on how to do it. Um, I just did a script writing class with a woman named, named Deb Ager, um, and she's on Facebook. And she actually offers a 
five day free script writing, content writing workshop where um, if you, and, it, and you just have to sign up. And if you look her up at Radiant Media Labs, she has links of how to sign up for this. Um, really worthwhile, helps you kind of hone in and understand on, you know, how do you create the most valuable information for your audience and make it seem genuine and digestible um, and do it in, you know, limited periods of time. Um, so her, her website's radiantmedialabs.com. Um, the other person is Mike Kilcoin. Now, remember, I'm plucking two people out of the universe to share their names. And it's not because these are the best people doing what they do. It's simply because they're two people had, who had an impact on me. And so I feel always compelled to, you know, pay it forward. And so I've gotten great value from both of these people. Mike Kilcoin has run a number of workshops. He is constantly changing what he's doing. But if you're interested in doing videos and you're interested in learning to write scripts, um, he's a really great resource. So definitely check him out. Um, something else to consider is teleprompter apps. You know, now again, the things that you are going to, be presented with to think about, you don't need any of this. But in reality, adding these little things can make life significantly easier for you. And so I actually use teleprompter apps that I started with free, but the free versions often put a, um, like a watermark on it. Um, and you get a little more um, uh, variability when, when you pay for it. I pay for something called, um, actually, no, the teleprompter app I, was not a monthly fee. I think it was like 15 bucks, um, but it allows, it gives me much more control of, um, of what I'm using, but there's tons and there's lots of good free options. Um, so start with free. That's, and that's always a good rule of thumb anyway, in general. All right, so now remember, we're going through scale. So now we're on camera. So frankly, the best thing to use is what you have. Um, you know, again, I, I absolutely believe that anybody who wants to could end this video and automatically make a video. And, and frankly, I think you should, because I, I think that there's nothing better than just diving right in because it's going to feel awkward and weird. And the, the only way to kind of break the ice is to do it. Um, so you're going to see the word kiss sprinkled throughout my slides. Do people know what kiss means? Keep it simple, stupid. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that's just something as well. Just please remember, you don't have to go overboard. Um, I just li I like technology. I've been doing this, you know, a long time in one way or another. And so for me, it's fun, you know, and I get to buy new stuff. Um, so, um, you know, all the, all the little tools that you see here are things that I have that I've bought, but um, I'll show you a picture in a second that, you know, you, you can also go overboard. Um, so everybody's got a smartphone or a tablet. And, and that's the best camera that you have. Um, but automatically, um, you, you need to consider, how are you gonna hold that camera? Are you like doing selfies, holding it out? And um, so that's a challenge. So you wanna find some sort of mounting bracket or something that'll hold your smartphone. And today, most of those actually screw onto um, tripod. So, I don't know how small I am on you, everybody's screens, but let me see here. Um, this is a, uh, a phone holder that's got a, uh, a, a tripod mount here and then a tripod mount on the bottom. Actually, this is screwed into it. Um, I actually use this to mount my cell phone to the front of my kayak. All right. And so I could take a video while kayaking without having to, to touch it. Um, however, my favorite tool is that selfie stick. 
So that specific selfie stick, and it doesn't have to be that one specifically, but that's the one I have. Um, it's automatic. It's one single piece. You've got the cell phone holder on the end of it. It extends, so it goes out. It's got a little Bluetooth um, uh, remote. And so, you know, when the selfie stick is, you know, three feet in front of you, it's hard to click the camera. So um, Bluetooth remotes are super handy. Um, but this I love better than anything because it's also got a tripod in and of itself. Um, great example of how I use this is I participate, not ever, I should every morning, but um, probably three times a week, I participate in a morning prayer meeting. And it used to be that I would go to my synagogue and the group would meet and we'd do the prayer meeting and you know everybody heads out. But now with COVID, nobody can do that. So we've done it online you know, for the last couple of months. Um, so I can take my little handy dandy selfie stick with my cell phone. I connect it to my Bluetooth headsets. I can be you know, far away from it. Um, and I just mount it and I walk around and I can you know, do my thing, but I'm participating in this meeting. It's, it's incredibly valuable. They're like 20 bucks. You know, and yes, you could spend more, you could probably spend less, um, but absolutely worthwhile to get. Um, another thing to consider is um, a tripod, right? You know, so they tripods, again, run the whole range. I know Amazon is taking over the world and I know Amazon is the beast that everybody loves to hate. Um, but you know, sometimes there's good reason for it and, and they are really good at what they do. So I, I am, you know, embarrassed to say that, you know, I probably have packages arriving, you know, almost daily because I can get, you know, day basic needs, even that toilet paper and, um, but they have a really great selection of um, camera stuff. And the easiest way to determine whether something's good or not, like, sh sh how do you know if you should buy this? Well, they do reviews. And if something has 14,000 reviews and it's four stars, that's a pretty good bet that whatever it is, is, is going to do what it's supposed to do. Um, the other thing about Amazon that's good is that, you know, stuff is easily returnable. So, you know, don't hesitate to buy something and feel like, yeah, you get stuck with it. You, you can always return it. Um, iOS versus Android. You know, I'm I personally an Apple guy from, from my phones. Um, and, but, but Android has a lot of great apps um, to use. There are camera apps, but they're frankly unnecessary because every camera has got its own built-in camera with a video recording and you know that's that's what you can use um i have moved into uh using my dslr which i've had for you know 120 years um so that is next level and i don't recommend it um unless you really become serious about it because the the step up in quality and um control is significant but it does add you know significant layers of complication so um but you know there's 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 lots of options to use okay um any questions so far i see that i'm not paying attention to um the chat box so karen would you just call out any questions that might come up you know if there is i'll give you we're at the 30 minute mark okay um, so the, you know, scale SCA audio, um, audio is absolutely important. Um, and it's actually kind of like a paradox. Um, it's really important to pay good attention to having the clearest sound that you can have. But at the same time, it's important to know that most people actually watch those videos without sound right? So many people are sitting on buses or they're watching video in a, um, in a doctor's office or, you know, their phones we have with us at all times. And not everybody necessarily has their Bluetooth headset to get the sound. So the reality is you can bet that half the time somebody's watching your videos, there's not going to be sound, which means 
if there's no subtitles, they're not going to continue watching because then all you're seeing, not, not much value in that. Um, so it's just another thing to consider, but I'll tell you, it's, it's not, it's, it's really pretty straightforward to be able to do. Um, so audio, what is the best, you know, you've got the built-in camera mics or can, you know, the phone mics, which are totally adequate if you're really close to the phone. Um, the Bluetooth headset, that, that I'm using, I'm actually not using the mic of the headset because there's a difference. And actually, let me change that and see if people can hear that. Um, where is, oh, that's weird, I lost my controls. Oh, here they are. Um, okay, so um, you're listening to me now, right? You can hear me again. Do I sound different? I do. Okay. So now I'm switching back. So this is my, this is my Bluetooth headset mic. And now I'm switching back to the mic that I'm using that I usually use, um, which is my blue Yeti, you know, um, USB plug-in, plug and play setup. And obviously it's on a movable arm that I have mounted to my desk. Um, and I can just swing it into room, but you can hear that like, I, I, it doesn't have to be in the picture um, to have that good quality sound. So if it were up to my kids, <laughs> um, they would say that this is the most important feature in any video. And I have absolutely pulled my hair out, you can see, um, as a result of that, because um, I've spent way too much time trying to make the sound perfect. And you just can't do it. You just can't do it. So kiss, keep it simple. Um, you know, what's the next best thing for a mic? So you'll see on the screen, I've got a little um, wired lavalier mic, okay? This is phenomenal and provides great sound. Um, the thing to remember though, is that every time you have a, product, you have a connection of some sort. And not every connection is going to work with the tools that you have. So I have spent an inordinate amount of time purchasing things only to find out that I don't have the right adapter for the tools that I'm using. So that's also really important to keep into consideration, right? If you have an iPhone, make sure that if you're buying a mic that plugs in you know, Apple decided to get rid of those, you know, uh, little, little headset, you know, earpiece plug-in. So you need one to be able to connect it, but it works really well. Um, and it provides phenomenal sound. Mine, I think is like 20 feet long. And so I can step way back. Um, you have to be conscious of, you know, trying to make it so that that wire isn't in the video, but um, there are a ton of options for all budgets. So, um, uh oh. <laughs> yeah. Uh oh. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Sorry about that. Um, so, um, I mean, and, and this is a great example. This is the great, this is the stuff that you can count on happening all the time. And so the more prepared you are and the more you roll with these technical challenges, the easier it's going to be because it's not a big deal. And the reality in today's world is that everybody's going to expect it to some degree or another. Um, so the Blue Yeti setup that I have you know, all said and done that the arm, the retractable arm, I think ran me, you know, 20 bucks. Um, the little round filter that goes in front of the mic is called a pop filter. Um, and it's meant to kind of soften your voice so you don't have so many p -p -p sounds like that. Um, uh, I tend to, another thing about doing video is that you're going to notice 
all the weird little nuanced things that you do, okay? Because they're gonna become glaringly um, evident. So I tend to go, and I, 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 and, and it, I, it's funny, I, I have a rabbi that I love listening to, that he does that and it drives me nuts. And I thought, oh my gosh, why? why he, he has to be conscious of that. Why is he doing, well, I do it. And, and I hadn't even thought about it. So um, the more sensitive your mic, the more it's gonna pick up stuff like that. So um, lots of options for all budgets. There's tons of stuff to choose from. Don't forget to consider um, adapters. And I'm gonna talk more about subtitles um, in just a couple of minutes. Um, may I also interject? There's a question that came across from Nancy. What is the name of the teleprompter app that you use? Um, that's a really good question. And it is teleprompter. <laughs> okay. Literally. Um, I actually think in the app store, it was video teleprompter. And I have the free version and the paid version. Um, and I actually think that I recently, so, so here's a great example of how you can get caught up in the rabbit hole. Um, so I bought the, the pro version of the video teleprompter app for my phone, because what it allows you to do is record the videos while you, the teleprompter actually records the videos as well. Right, so it's all on your phone. It's running through the screen. So you have it on the same device. It's actually the best thing because you're looking straight at the camera and you're reading as you go. So you have eye contact directly. You know, the, the what we're doing today, I'm glancing all over the place because I have you guys over on this screen for me and I've got my presentation here, but I have to look down, you know. So obviously things are most natural when you're looking at your audience. That said, um, I've started recording, actually, if you look at that, um, you're, under the word lighting, there's a picture of uh, um, my front door, okay, and that's, that's where my studio <laughs> lives, um, and there's a boom mic and a couple tripods and, you know, a stand. I bought recently these stands for um, holding the little LED lights that I have, but those little LED lights actually have their own tripods and can sit right on my desk right here. So everything's pretty versatile. Everything individually doesn't cost a lot. It's just, it all adds up. And then every time you add in these additional elements, they add layers of complication. So again, remember that they're unnecessary, but they're helpful. So um, in terms of lighting, the best lighting is natural light, which is a blessing. Now, interestingly, what people don't think, so I'm using natural light for, for my vid, the video you see me in right now. I have a huge window right here off to this side, okay? However, that window is got um, shades that are drawn and down because if the, wind, the shades were up, I'd have a glare. Right now, now, I'm not meaning to pick on anyone, but if you look at Karen, Karen ha is backlit by her window, okay? And so there's a big shadow. It, it's not, and again, Karen, I don't mean to pick on you, but it, it's a good example. Um, it, it's not flattering. Not for you, Karen, you're beautiful, but, but the lighting isn't helping. So you want to be conscious of the fact that it's so much more powerful when people don't have to be focused on the light, the weird lighting. So, you know, here's two examples on the, on this um, slide of good is just being totally front lit, put a lamp in front of you, put, you know, just readjust your living room stuff um, and be cognizant of what's behind you. Okay. So you can see in the backlit shot, the lighting is really only coming from that lamp in the back. But in the good shot, that lamp is still on in the background, but, but the lighting in the front is what the camera is picking up. So it, it, the camera is always going to um, adjust for the lighting that is the easiest to um, detect near your face. And that's what you want. Um, 
again, there's lots of inexpensive options today. Uh, LED lights are readily available almost everywhere you go. Um, the lights that you see at my uh, above Ziggy, um, it are, um, I, I think they were like 20 bucks. And it might've actually been a set of two, in which case it might, maybe it was 30. Um, but it came with all these filters, all these things that I never use. Um, I do use them on my desk. There was a period of time when I was recording videos right at my desk and I felt like it, I needed better lighting because I didn't have um, the natural light. Sometimes I did it at night. So I, I would put those on, but because um, LED lights are very bright, um, I found that I needed to actually bounce them off something. So I bought these little reflectors. Um, and you know, these are also inexpensive. It kind of folds up and you can put it away. I actually have it mounted to an old monitor stand with a clip. Um, so you can get really creative about, you know, setting things up. Things do not have to be fancy. Um, nobody looks at what's in the background. They're only looking at that final product. And I think that the best final products are the ones where you can't tell what it is that they're using or doing, and you're not even really paying attention to it because everything is simply presented so well that really what you're focused on is what's most important, which is whatever you're saying. It's the content of what you're putting out. That's what you want people to focus on, um, which actually leads us into editing. Now, may I interrupt? We have 20 yeah. minutes. I'm, I'm, I'm acting as your timekeeper. Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, that's, that always helps me. So. Yes, absolutely. I appreciate that. No. Um, so editing, there's, are, there are tons of pros and cons. Um, editing gives you the ability to add music, right? As simple as that. And editing can be done on your, your phone. You know, there are amazing phone apps that allow you to just shorten the cl a clip. So a, a great example of uh, things that I had to do early on. So you, let's say you're just starting out, okay? You wanna make your first video. You simply have your phone leaning up against your monitor somewhere and you're you know, sitting up there and you're just kind of recording a video. Well, you have to lean in to hit the start button and then you come away and then at the end, you're going to lean in to turn it off and you're gonna come away. Do you want that in your video? Maybe you do, maybe you don't care and, and, and that is perfect. Like, don't care, that's great. But if you wanna clean it up a little bit, there's actually apps on every phone that will simply allow you to shorten and cut off. They, they, it's called trimming, to trim the video so that you cut off those first and adjust those first few seconds and you adjust the final few seconds and boom, you, it starts with you speaking, right? So that, that's what the editing is all about. Um, adding sound, you can add text, you can add subtitles, all of this still can still be done from on, from on your phone. Um, editing also allows you to, to improve or enhance the lighting. So let's say you shot something and the lighting's not exactly as you want. Um, always be better to move forward. I'm, I'm a firm believer that perfection is the enemy of progress. So it really is important to just be willing to make mistakes and put shit out, please. Don't, like, don't, don't worry about it being perfect because it's never going to be perfect. Um, but once you're at that point where you feel like you're willing to put that time in, then, then you can add these things. Um, other things that you can add with uh, the videos, if you look at my most recent videos, I'm starting to do all these transitions. I just, I enjoy it. And because I don't have any clients, which I would frankly prefer to have clients, I do have time. And so I'm, you know, my, my wife and I have this kind of ongoing battle of, um, why are you putting all this time into these videos? Because <laughs> um, there's no, you know, I'm not getting any return. Um, but, you know, I, I feel like I'm playing a long game and I'm gaining valuable tools along the way. Um, downside of video, it, or of editing, it is unbelievably time consuming and tedious. Now, I enjoy it, it's my creative outlet. Um, it's not really simple, and 
you know, the, the, the more challenging and things you want to get can get fairly complicated. Um, if anybody's familiar with like the, the premier tools used in photography and film are, are Adobe products. Um, and Adobe Premiere and Adobe Photoshop are, you know, the tool, you know, primary tools used by most professionals. They're effing complicated. They're not easy things to use. So I actually, early on, I downloaded this free version of something called Filmora. Um, and I eventually bought it because it was, I felt it was worth my time. I think it was like 70 bucks and, and it's yours. Um, and it is ridiculously powerful for my needs. I'm not creating professional videos. Um, I'm just, you know, doing transitions, but, but it allows me to add in, and you know, another thing is B-roll, all right? Um, does, do people know what B-roll is? Right, so think about you're watching a video and it cuts to a scene, you're, the person's still talking, but now it cuts to a scene relating to something that they're talking about. So in my uh, recent video series in the beginning, uh, my in, as part of my intro, I'm talking about people feeling anxious and overwhelmed and frustrated. And while I'm saying this on those videos, I cut to um, someone expressing anxiety or feeling frustrated or getting bad news. Um, that's what B-roll is. Um, and so- I'm, How do you spell you know, that? I'm sorry? How do you spell that? I, I actually think it's just B-roll. It's in this slide, right? It's a number four at the end. Oh, okay. sorry. Uh, yeah. So, and, and I think it's background, right? And roll is a term for, you know- No, actually no. it's- um, it's back from the film days, whoops. <laughs> okay. Where you had an A and a B roll. And oh. the A roll was the main footage and the B roll was the secondary footage. Awesome, I've learned something new today. Thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> sure. Um, so, uh, you know, B roll is a really easy way to elevate the level of your videos significantly. Um, it, Cause it's really powerful. I mean, it, it, it has, um, the ability to add an emotional depth um, and some, you know, some um, uh, element of interest for the for viewers. Um, another downside of editing is that it's, you know, it can be expensive. You know, Adobe Premiere is something that is, you know, hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Um, and because it's time consuming, time is money could be very expensive. So um, I use Filmora. I think it's a reasonable, you know, uh, editing tool worthwhile checking out if you're looking at it. My subtitles, I go to a uh, site called veed.io, V-E-E-D.io, and it's the bottom of the slide. Um, the benefit of Veed is that it's also, frankly, an editing tool. So you could actually do all your editing using Veed. Now, Veed is also free. Um, I am a huge fan. And the, again, it's to, I said early on, when, when I find something that I find valuable, um, I wanna pay it forward. And so I can't, like these are young guys who, I, they haven't been around a year, I think. Um, and the product is only getting better and better and better. And every time I log into it, which I do, you know, not daily, but weekly for sure, um, uh, there's new features and there's new things that it can do. So you could actually do all your film editing, all your video editing right in Veed. You just drag and drop your file into their format and they upload it. I personally only use it for the subtitles, but um, you can do all sorts of things. You can add Type, you can add general titles and you can cut and trim and um, it's, it's great. And I can't remember, they added a, a feature recently, which I was excited about. I can't remember what it is, but I haven't checked it out yet. Um, and then the other tool that I use all the time is Google, right? Um, Google is your source of information, just like it's our client's source of information, right? 
people are like Googling, you know, what is it that my doctor said to me? And why, you know, are they telling me to take this medication that I can't spell? Um, so, you know, Google is really, um, I think, still an underrated tool or underappreciated tool. And the best advice that I could offer, I think, is that if you have a question, type it in Google. Ask just literally how you would, what video tool should I use that is simple and inexpensive? Now, you have to sort through a lot of stuff, but you know, the answers are there. So, um, other considerations to think about, and I mentioned this a little earlier as well, but you know, the, the format. Phones have funny ways of changing the formats of what uh, we're using. So there's MP4 is hands down the format that you should use. It is the most compact with the highest um, uh, definition. Um, a lot of sites and websites, and frankly, remember that the larger a file, the longer it takes to upload or download. And so the smaller you can get your files, the better. Um, .mov files are, kind, I believe, will come off of an iPhone if you adjust it, but you can make changes and you can set it to do MP4s, or there are free online tools that will convert your files for you. Okay, and literally just type into Google, convert MOV to MP4, and there are sites that you can just drag a file in and, and they'll convert it for you. They're phenomenal, free. Um, video aspect ratios are things to consider, right? So I am now filming everything in what is in that, uh, in that purple um, box with all the different images. I'm filming in 16.9 landscape, which is kind of like the movie versions. It's the version that if you're on YouTube looks the best. The downside to that is that on LinkedIn and on Facebook, um, they tend to give preference to squares. So you get more screen space with a square and more real estate. That said, um, I don't have the time to film and shoot and make each of my videos in different formats. So I had to pick one. I used to do squares, now I do landscape. Um, but it's, it's worth considering, especially, you know, based on, and this is the next one, the platform that you're gonna use. So it's also a good idea, at least in the beginning, and, and this is relevant, I think, just for marketing in general. Pick a platform, and do that platform well. Um, it doesn't matter the platform. Maybe it's Instagram. Maybe you're all about Instagram and Instagram then should be the place you go because your clients are there. Um, Facebook and LinkedIn actually tend to be the primary social media areas and, and then YouTube is you know, behind that in, in different ways. Um, but I would try and pick a platform, especially between LinkedIn and Facebook because they're really different and how videos play on those platforms and how they're received are actually really different as well. And it can be incredibly frustrating to try and create your content, um, which is what you're about to do. If you decide to do this, you're going to have a new title, which is content creator. Um, but you know, are your videos going to be pro promotional? Are you selling yourself? Are they educational? Are they marketing? You know, are you doing a podcast? Are you doing a tutorial video? Or are you simply making a presentation? These are all things worth considering, and, and you know, the platforms are going to kind of change based on what it is you're doing. So, lessons Can I learned. Ask a question. Yeah. Uh, so can you just explain what, just very, very in short, what's the difference between Facebook and LinkedIn? Um, I would tell you that the main difference between Facebook and LinkedIn is that Facebook has become, I will say so that nobody, I'm not calling anybody else out, my generation's platform, which means that my kids who are 24 and 21 want mm -hmm. to have as little to do with it as possible. Um, however, it 
they're still on plat they're still on Facebook too, and um, it's probably the most used um, for everybody every day. So that's the value in Facebook, but it's used a lot for personal. LinkedIn is all about business, so LinkedIn is quickly becoming the go-to place for business to business. Now, I'll tell you, I have my platform of choice and focus has been LinkedIn. Um, has it been the right choice? I'm not sure. I'm not willing to throw in the towel yet. Um, I'll tell you that everything that I've thrown at the wall, I don't think has stuck because um, I'm not getting phone calls. And it's, it's, you know, one of the things that I'm considering next step is actually hiring somebody to coach me on messaging and helping me refine my message that I'm getting. Because clearly, like I, I, I get compliments all the time and people say, oh, I love what you're doing. And, you know, but the reality is I'm not getting a lot of engagement, which is really what you want more than anything. Um, and that engagement is simply somebody liking it, but ideally somebody commenting it so you can start conversations. Um, and then ultimately you want somebody to call you because they want to hire you for something. Um, but it, it does, so, so that, that's the main difference if that, if that helps, Kai. Um, that was a quite, you know, um, elaborate one. Thank you so much. Yeah, yeah I so- I have exactly same actually question about what you're doing, so. Yeah, and, and I would pick one and, and focus on that because um, it makes it easier. And then as you get more comfortable. So no reason to reinvent the wheel. So many people have done this and are doing it. Learn from the people who have done it. Um, mm. And remember to choose progress over perfection. So this, the symbol at the bottom, what does it mean? Just do it. Yes. Thank you. Just do it. Um, so my uh, my favorite person initially who kind of got me into social media um, is Gary V. I don't know if anybody has listened to him. He's, he's quite brash, um, but he's really eloquent at the same time. And he is all about, listen, just get out and do it. And the, don't, if you're hesitating, then you're not doing it. And so make your first video, even though you might look like Batman. Right, and it's gonna feel like you're, if this is really hard and I hate how I look and this video sucks and I'm, I look silly and I feel weird. That all of those things are gonna happen. Be patient, go easy on yourself. Rome wasn't built in a day. If you make it a habit, it gets easier every time. I've just given you some really basic scripts and formulas. So just follow the, the absolute basics. Um, and if you want to really get creative, you know, make a calendar because that is super helpful in terms of um, not stressing it out about what to post next. So, you know, what, what do people post online? Here are some great examples, but there's good reason for it, right? Today is the best day to accomplish something, right? Today's a great day to start something big. Um, I love this from Eleanor Roosevelt. Do one thing every day that scares you challenge yourself. Um, the best way to predict the future is to create it, right? Make, make your reality. Um, so some easy ways to do that. Here are some people who I think are absolutely worthwhile to follow. Um, Gary V, who I just mentioned, he's on every platform, so he's easy to find. Um, he, you know, he, not everybody's going to appeal to, to everyone. So find the people that appeal to you. These happen to be the people that appeal to me. So Joe Rogan is another one. Um, I, I knew that there was this Joe Rogan podcast that people talked about, but I had no idea he was a comedian. And if you're okay with non-PC stuff, personally, I find him hysterical. Um, but he's so different in his podcast from his comedy. Um, but he's brilliant and eloquent and he gets, um, he's who I'm listening to now instead of audiobooks. Um, because he brings on incredibly interesting, important, relevant people 
on a daily basis for, for daily stuff. So um, the bottom three are people that I found on LinkedIn, Shay Robottom, Jonathan Palmar, Shanae Murray, all worthwhile looking up. Um, and, you know, the, this is the last slide. Um, you know, remember, I'm happy to send you my slides. It's easy. Subscribe to my YouTube channel and um, sign up for my newsletter and send me a note saying that you've done it and I'll send you my slides. Um, it, you don't have to reinvent the wheel. I'm happy to make myself available time-wise to anybody who has questions. Um, and look, I think that the more successful each of us are, the more successful we'll all be. We're in a profession that's still relatively new um, and we're at the ground floor. So, you know, the ability for this to explode is huge and I hope you're able to, you know, I hope there was some value here and you can take it and run with it. Thank you, Thank you, Jackie. That was excellent. So well thought out, so well organized, packed full with powerful tips. I think we can all just do it. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And uh, honestly, you can do it today. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so, and, and, and you know what? Actually, if anybody wants, I'm happy to, um, actually, if, if you send me a notification, like a message on LinkedIn, I'll send you back a quick video message to inspire you to send me back a video message, okay? Because you can do it right from your phone. Um, and it's actually a brilliant tool that people are using today because it's powerful to have uh, uh, an instant response be the person talking. So 1059. Good idea. Thank you very Thank you. much. Thank you so much for the inspiration. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And, and everybody can do it. It's, you know, it's not rocket science. Well, we will send you our, our, our masterpieces. Yeah. <laughs> and, and remember for, for the LinkedIn thing, literally just send me a message. Hey, Saki. Um, and, and, and I'll respond with a video and then, you know, you can decide whether or not to respond with a video. Thank you so, so much. Yeah, and, my pleasure. My I pleasure. I was going to say too, if you want a safe space to upload your videos first, to get some feedback from the group, you know, you can always upload them to our Facebook page and invite, you know, collaboration, comment, <laughs> if, if you will. It's, it, it just, I know for me, I like having that middle step where- I'm going to work with Karen on that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, but, you know, another thing that you can do, you can actually upload videos to YouTube um, and just mark them as unlisted. Um, and so nobody can find them um, except somebody you send a link to. Yeah. Good point. Thank you. So, Thanks again. Yeah. All right. Thank, thank you. you again, guys. I appreciate the time. Bye-bye. Thank you. See ya. Thank you so much, Karen, for organizing this. You always oh. have a thoughtful, smart ideas. It's my pleasure. Hey, and look to, for your inboxes, I'm going to host another uh, one this coming Friday at sort of a uh, short notice, but um, I, I'll, I'll just, that's just my teaser. Look for another one because we have some big decisions to make together next week. Take okay. care. Awesome. Thanks. Take care. Bye. 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 Take care.